welcome back to a new week of what's for dinner. I'm really excited about it, but I just wanted to say something first. I wanted to thank you guys. So this week we reached 10,000 subscribers and to me it just still feels unreal and it feels like it didn't even happen. I didn't ever think my channel would get to 10,000 subscribers. So thank you guys seriously from the bottom of my heart. It really means a lot to me. But anyways, I hope you guys enjoy this new week of what's for dinner. We made some pretty yummy meals here in my new kitchen. Hope you guys are all doing well, staying safe and healthy, but let's go on to this week of meals. To get us started off today, we're just making some healthy, easy baked chicken fingers. Into my little bowl right here, I'm just pouring in about a cup of breadcrumbs. I used half original breadcrumbs and then half Italian style, just because I didn't have enough regular breadcrumbs on hand. Anyways, this recipe called for panko breadcrumbs. I just didn't have any panko breadcrumbs on hand either. And now I'm just adding in about a fourth a cup of grated Parmesan cheese. As far as the seasonings, I'm just gonna be adding a fourth a teaspoon of garlic powder, thyme, parsley, paprika, salt, and then only an eighth of a teaspoon of pepper. Then you're just gonna stir this all together. Into a separate bowl, I'm just adding in about a fourth of a cup of some olive oil. For the chicken, you're gonna need about a pound and a half of some chicken tenders. Of course, I didn't have any chicken tenders on hand, so I just used a pound and a half of chicken breast, and I just kind of made these into homemade chicken tenders, I guess you could say, just by cutting them like this. To be quite honest with you guys, this recipe is so simple, so if you're a new cook or just learning how to cook, or anything of that nature, this recipe would be great for you just because it's kind of simple and you know, it just has very little steps. So I just put those on my cookie sheet lined with parchment paper and baked them into my oven until they reach the internal temperature of 165 degrees. And here's what they look like out of the oven. I just paired them with some barbecue sauce and a side salad. These were honestly super, super good. Next time I wanna try them with some panko breadcrumbs instead just because I prefer panko breadcrumbs when I make my chicken tenders. For this meal, we're just making some chicken taco masala and it's going to knock your socks off. To start, I have about a pound and a half of chicken breast. I'm just slicing it into little cubes like this and then I'm just gonna be putting it into this medium sized bowl right there. Now we're gonna begin on the marinade because this has to sit in the fridge for a little bit. Anyways, I just am adding in about a cup of some Greek yogurt. This recipe called for plain yogurt. Of course, I didn't have any plain yogurt on hand. Next, I'm putting in my minced garlic. Then I'm gonna be adding my ginger. This recipe called for fresh ginger, but I didn't have any fresh ginger on hand, so I just used the powdered stuff. And then some ground masala, turmeric, ground cumin. This recipe called for chili powder. I just didn't want to add chili powder just because I didn't want it too spicy, but if you like spice, go ahead and add your chili powder right now. And then about a teaspoon of salt, then I just stirred this together, put some clean grab on top, and then I let this marinate in my fridge for about 30 minutes. While that chicken was marinating in the fridge, I went ahead and started on my homemade naan bread recipe. This is my favorite naan bread recipe of all time. I just love it. Anyways, it's two cups of all-purpose flour, one and a fourth cup of plain yogurt. I used Greek yogurt, that's what I typically do, and then two teaspoons of baking powder, and then a fourth a teaspoon of some salt. Then you're just going to mix this all together and you want it to be kind of like a ball. You don't want it too liquidy and you don't want it too dry. So just add more Greek yogurt or more flour to kind of get it into that consistency. Once my dough was at the consistency I wanted it to be, I just kind of started rolling it out and then I divided it into five different 
pieces and from that I rolled those five different pieces into individual flat non-bread pieces and then I just stacked them one on top of each other. For my rice, I just used some white rice to go along with our chicken taco masala on that night. I just used a cup and a half of rinsed white rice along with a little under two cups of water and then a tablespoon of some olive oil. And then of course I just pressed the rice button. I've been really liking the rice button recently. I know I said that before, but it kind of just does all the work for you. While the rice was cooking, I started cooking up our chicken taco masala. So I added in our chicken to my oiled pan. I do have all the recipe instructions and ingredients linked down below in my description box. Anyways, you're supposed to be adding in the chicken kind of in batches so it doesn't crowd. Of course, I'm so impatient I didn't do that. I just added it all in at once and I just let that cook all together. Now that my chicken is completely cooked, I just removed it from the pan and put it on a separate plate. And now we're going to begin on the sauce. So I just added in my vegetable oil along with my onion. This is just a white onion chopped up and I just let that get nice and translucent. So now that it is translucent, I'm going to be adding in my tablespoon and a half of French minced garlic and I'm just going to let that get fragrant. This recipe truly does call for a lot of seasonings. So for the seasonings, I just used some dried ginger. Again, I used some ground masala, ground cumin, and some turmeric. Again, you could use some chili powder at this point if you want it spicy, but I just chose to not do that. So I just stirred that around in the onions so it got all up in all of the onions. And now I'm gonna be adding in my tomato sauce. This is just 14 ounces of that. And then I just stirred that all together and I let that come up to a simmer. Now that I let this simmer for about 10 minutes, I'm just gonna be adding in my heavy cream. This is just a cup and a fourth of heavy cream. You're also gonna be adding in your teaspoon of brown sugar at this point. If you want your sauce a little bit less thick, go ahead and add a fourth a cup of water if you want that. Anyways, I just stirred this all together and I removed it from the heat and then I just added back in our chicken and I stirred this all together and I let that chicken get nice and warmed through. At this point, I just started warming up our tortillas and cooking them up. So into my really hot frying pan right here, I just put the tortilla on. You don't want to use any oil or anything of that nature. Just a hot pan works great. I just put that on, let it get nice and bubbly, and cooked it up. Here is my plate all plated up. This turned out so, so delicious. This was honestly one of my favorite meals out of the entire week. This was just so flavorful, and if you've never tried chicken taco masala, I really do recommend it. For this nice dinner, I made rigatoni with sausage, tomatoes, and zucchini. Over here to my saucepan, I just have about a tablespoon of some olive oil in there. Then I just added in my chopped up white onion, and I stirred this all together until the onion got translucent. Over to my cutting board, I'm just chopping up my zucchini. This is kind of like a medium to large size zucchini. The recipe called for two small zucchinis, but this is all I had, so this is what I used. This recipe calls for a handful of basil. My interpretation from that is about five to six pieces. So I have my own basil plant. If you guys don't have a basil plant yet, I really do suggest it. Fresh basil adds so much flavor to recipes. Anyways, I just chopped this up and set it to the side. Now that my onion is translucent, I'm gonna be adding in my pound of sausage. I just used this Jimmy Dean Original Sausage. You could pretty much use any type of sausage you like. Just make sure it's a pound. Now that my sausage is completely cooked and I drained out all the grease, I'm just adding in my tablespoon and a half of garlic along with my three tablespoons of tomato paste. I kind of cheated and added four tablespoons because I hate for things to go to waste. I just thought it was weird how it didn't call for the entire jar. But anyways, I just added that in and I stirred this all together until that started to simmer.
Over to my large pot of some boiling water, I just added three-fourths of my box of rigatoni to that and let it cook. Back over to my sausage mixture, I'm just adding in my can of petite diced tomatoes. This is about 14 ounces, or you could add two cups of normal grape tomatoes. I also added in my cup of chicken broth. You could use white wine if you cook with wine. I just seasoned it with a little bit of salt and pepper. At this point, you're also going to be adding in your chopped up zucchini along with your basil. And then I just brought this up to a simmer until I got my zucchini to the consistency. I like it. I like it very soft so my daughter could eat it. Before I drain the pasta, I'm going to reserve about a half a cup of water for later. So now that I did drain the pasta, I'm going to add it back into my large pot along with our cooked sausage and zucchini mixture and then I just tossed in that water. Then I just stirred this to combine and served it up. Here is my plate all plated up. I just served it on top with some Parmesan cheese and some basil. This turned out so, so good. Even my daughter Brinley loved it. This was so flavorful. It was really good. I feel like even children would love it. Adults would love it. It's just an all around delicious meal. For this night's dinner, I just made some Instant Pot barbecue ribs. We're gonna start on our seasoning mixture. So into this little bowl, I'm just adding a tablespoon of brown sugar along with some dry mustard and some paprika, and then a teaspoon of garlic powder, onion powder, and some salt. This recipe called for smoked salt. I could not find smoked salt at my grocery store, so I just used normal salt. And then a teaspoon of some black pepper. Also, you could use some cayenne pepper for this recipe. I just didn't want it too spicy because recently I just haven't been feeling spices, so I just skipped that step. Here I just have about a pound of some baby back ribs and I'm just going to take the membrane off the back. If you guys don't know how to do that, you just kind of peel that weird layer. The reason you guys should do this is just because it makes your ribs a little bit more tender. And I did want to mention I got this meal inspiration from Kristen Stepp. So thank you for the meal inspiration. Anyways, I just coated these ribs with some of this dry rub seasoning that we made up. Into my Instant Pot, I just put my little trivet in there like that. You want to make sure that you do your, your trivet or you use your steamer. And then I added in a cup of water and then I put the ribs in there. I just coiled the ribs just like that. And then of course I put the lid on, set it to sealing. Then I put this on for high pressure, 20 minutes. I also did a natural release. Here are my ribs out of the Instant Pot. These are completely cooked. I just put them on top of my cookie sheet, brushed them with a little bit of barbecue sauce, then stuck them under my broiler in my oven for a few minutes so the barbecue sauce got nice and sticky. I did want to mention this recipe called for two pounds of ribs. I only used one pound because my family is small. If you do go to use the two pounds of ribs, just keep the cooking time the same exact way. But anyways, these are my ribs all finished. They're just looking so, so good. And here it is all plated up. I just served it alongside of a baked potato and a side salad. I thought these ribs were super good and how fast they were to make. I thought they were definitely worth making, you know, because I love a quick instant pot recipe. Okay, my meatless meal friends, this one is for you. We're making vegetarian enchiladas, and this is kind of a different vegetarian enchilada that I have ever made before. I'm just starting out by chopping up one white onion into small pieces, then I'm heading over to my saucepan, adding oil, and then adding my onion, and then kind of, you know, making that translucent. You could add a bell pepper in at this point. I just did not have a bell pepper on hand, but go ahead and add that in if you have it. Now I'm just adding in my four cloves of garlic and then I'm going to be adding in my spices. It is just some paprika, cumin, and chili powder. Add more or less chili powder depending on how spicy you guys want it. And then I just stirred this all together so the onion got coated in the spices. And then I just added in my can, 15 ounces of my black beans. These are drained and rinsed along with my corn.
I just stirred that all together and let it simmer for about five minutes. And then after that, I just squeezed in my one lime and that is what I'm doing right now. Then I just mixed everything to combine. You guys already know what time it is. It is time to assemble our enchiladas. So over to my 9x13 baking dish, I just poured a little bit of my enchilada sauce in there. This is about a cup and a half of enchilada sauce total, I believe. And then I just started assembling our enchiladas. I just got my flour tortillas, put some of the mixture inside, and did it over and over again. You could also use corn tortillas if that's what you prefer. And then now that I am through doing that, I'm just pouring the remainder of our enchilada sauce on top. And then I'm sure you guys could guess the next part. I'm just going to coat it with some mild cheddar cheese. Pepper jack cheese would also be delicious for this. And then I'm just going to stick it into the oven. Here are my enchiladas out of the oven. I just sprinkled it with some cilantro leaves for color and of course some lime. This was so, so good. Even my daughter liked it for a meatless meal. I just served it alongside of some guacamole, iceberg lettuce, and cherry tomatoes. I really do recommend this one. This is so, so good. Even if you don't eat meatless, I think you should try it. And just like that, that is a wrap of this week's What's For Dinner. I hope you guys all enjoyed it and got plenty of meal inspiration. If you are new here, I'd love to have you over at my channel. So go ahead and subscribe down below the video. But I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye for now.